Him. I want to watch the, the news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. You're watching FNN the Fox News Network. This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. I have a man sitting next to me that has not only influenced the way I sing, the bands he's been in been some of my favorite bands of all time, have influenced the way I write songs, the way I sing, the way I play guitar. Don't blame me, blame society. You suck. Viewer discretion is advised. Unless you're Paul Stanley of Kerloff, be sure to tune in to the only news that matter and smack on a gob. <laughs> Bang Bang Pizza Skull, Smack em Gob, everybody. The only news that matters is back. That's right. As you can see, it's a little different now, though, because I really don't have time to do it how I used to do it with the pictures and the little gags and stuff. Uh, but I figured this way I can bring back the only news that matters. Just fire up the camera and yap. So the first story is uh, Judas Priest is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Let me tell you something. I know you all have heard me bitch about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but then, like, you know, I don't know, the past four or five years I've been thinking, you know, they're not the problem. Who's the problem are you people that care. And all of you that are happy about Judas Priest getting in, uh, you're sad. You're just sad. I mean, they're not even, what is it? It's not the performing... Uh, you know, they didn't get really in. They, what is it, the musical excellence or something? Now, when I first heard about it, I was like, oh, damn, they got in. Then I got kind of happy because they weren't in the performance category where I thought, oh, that's cool. Uh, but then I saw Rob Hofford talk about that they are going to perform. So I'm bummed again. But whatever, you know, here, here's the deal. You know, uh, a lot of people say, but, but Ralph... Rob Halford wants to get in, you know, you should be happy for him. Look, I love Rob Halford. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I worship the man. Very important to the soundtrack of my life. But I ain't no sheep, you know. My problem is I was getting a little embarrassed for the man, you know, begging to be in there these past few times they got uh, nominated and didn't get in. Kept begging people, please vote and this and that and... uh I'll tell you the good thing about this. The good thing is I don't have to hear him beg anymore. And how about that fan vote? The fan vote where uh, they didn't even make the top five. And, you know, I just find the people that vote are ridiculous. I'm sorry. If I offend you, I'm not sorry. I don't give a fuck what you think. I think, I think you're fucking, you're, you're, you're delusional. You know, to, but... At the same time, I'm happy that they, you know, they didn't make the top five and still got in, which goes to show fans don't matter with this damn place. The only thing that matters about the place is money. And uh, I didn't really realize this till uh, Steve Miller made a stink about it when he was, which I consider him a god now. You know, I consider him as cool as Johnny Rotten, uh, you know, I told him to fuck off. But he went there and raised a stink saying, man... You're charging tens of thousands of dollars for these tables. Where does the money go? Exactly. It goes into the pocket. It doesn't go into music programs or buying instruments for kids for the future of music because they don't give a fuck about music. They only care, care about money, you know. And how long has Judas Priest, you know, been around and Eminem got in and, you know, he's part of the elite performance category that got in. Um, and then there's people that say, but Ralph, wouldn't it be cool that they get to perform and KK gets to perform with them? No, that's even worse. All right, <clears throat> look at it this way. I mean, this is pure logic. Let's say they perform, which, God, Lemmy, listen to me, Lemmy, make it not happen. So it can piss off all you people that always get mad about the place. Um, they get KK to perform to these elitist douchebags that charge all these money. 
And then after they perform to the leaders, douchebags that hate metal, they kick KKK kick, kick to the curb and continue to tour without them. Is that what you want? Here's the deal, and I said it before and I'll say it again, man. And I, and I mean this with all my heart. Y'all can disagree, but I don't care. This is just an opinion. You know, don't blame me. Blame your parents for raising a dingleberry if you get offended what I'm about to say. True Judas Priest fans, this is their Hall of Fame. Everything you see right here. You see, all this, all of my records and my CDs over there, this is my Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I induct them with my wallet. That is the greatest Hall of Fame there could be. Your music collection. Now, you, you know, that, that's my point. But I have, I, have a, I have now love for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I love them now. I love them because they piss off all you people that care. I admit I was one of them, but man, it's been like a decade or maybe even two decades that I just don't care anymore, you know? But then, you know, every year's the same thing. Wah, I want my band in there. Wah. Why do you want acceptance from douchebags that hate metal? I don't get it. I'll never get it. It's like Jews for Hitler. What the hell's wrong with you guys? Seriously. And my point of the whole thing is, all right, Judas Priest is in. All right, now Rob can stop begging. All you douchebags can stop whining. And, uh, but, you know, man, in a perfect world, I hope you're listening to me, Lemmy. Judas Priest won't perform, but they'll let. Guess who's back? Back again. Shady's back. Back again. Let him perform. We already know he is performing. But, you know, Rob said they're performing too, and that bums me out, but whatever. Whatever. You know, um, you know, you win, you, you, you dorks out there. You non-hardcore Priest fans. You know, I, I'm telling you, man, look, I'm not naming names even though you guys don't know this guy. There's a dude I grew up with back in the 80s who is stuck in the 80s. And that's fine. He's stuck in the 80s. And I, anytime I ever see the guy, it's at a big arena show from one of those 80s bands. You know, he doesn't explore new music. He doesn't go check out local bands. He's all happy. Yeah. Judas Priest is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And he even started an argument uh, with me about it because it offended him. But, you know, my point is, it's okay if you're stuck in the 80s. It's okay if you don't uh, explore new music. All that's okay with me. I, I, to each his own. But, man, to lecture me about music? You? Get the fuck out of here. I don't think I'm better than you. But I sure know that you cannot lecture me. You should never lecture a man that knows more about music than you do when it comes to music. All right, I guess that's the end of that. Uh, next story. Uh, Kiss is releasing the Creature of the Night box set. Now, <clears throat> I was like, oh, well, looks like I'm going to throw Gene and Paul money again. See, I don't mind giving Gene and Paul money as long as it's a product that I like. See, when Gene and Paul, I'll give you an example. The last, um, that I have, what's it called? Instant Live or whatever the fuck it's called. The soundboard thing, which I want to thank. Uh, I know he, I'm pretty sure he told me not, not to say his name, but this right here. Uh, off the soundboard. Uh, this is the one from Tokyo, the first one, which did well. It sold well. But the second one, with um, Eric Singer and Tommy Thayer, did not sell too good. Now, I heard with the Donington one they're selling, which has Peter Chris and Ace Frehley, the pre-orders are good. They're solid. And that's, that's what I want to be. I mean, I didn't order the Donington one, but I'm sure the hell going to order that Creatures. And I'll sure as hell order, like, you know, I might even order the Donington one. I'm kind of on the fence about it, but if they release something from, you know, I don't know, the 70s, a really good sounding 70s show, I'm buying that bitch, you know? So, so and, and also it's my way of showing Gene and Paul what has already been proven. You know, people are going to pay money for the classic shit, not for Eric Singer and Tommy Thayer. They will, 
for the tour, the, the end of the road tour, because most people that go to the end of the road tour are casuals, you know, and uh, <clears throat> a lot of people don't know it's not Ace and Peter up there. I'll give you an example, and I mentioned this before, and some kids twat had to like argue me with me about it. My niece, who's like 30 something now, back in the 80s, when I would babysit her, she always wanted to see Kiss and Meet the Phantom. And she loved Peter Chris and Ace Frilly, those two. That was her favorites, right? So a couple years ago, she called me going, oh my God, Kiss is coming. You know, she saw the picture in, in an ad. We got to go see Kiss. And I said, Vanessa, Ace and Peter are no longer in the band. She's like, what? And then some Kiss Twats were like, how dare she not know that? You are twat. Not everybody's like you. The, the planet doesn't revolve around Kiss with everybody, okay? And I saw, I think it was Kiss Facts or one of those Kiss things, uh, Kiss podcasts. One of those guys were sitting next to a dude that said, look, I took a picture with Ace Frehley. And it was a picture of the guy with Tommy Thayer. Let me tell you, a lot of people that don't keep up with Kiss will go see it for rock and roll all night and the pyro. All right? But when it comes to record sales, when it comes to the Kiss Army, you know, the Kiss Army is going to buy all the classic shit. And I don't mean no offense by it, but those that buy... You know, the Tommy Faye, what is it, that that last one, that off the soundboard? You're, you're in the Kiss Girl Scouts, okay? Come on, let's face reality here. And uh, so, you know, um, I'm excited about the Kiss box set. All right, here's the next story. Um, they, all right, this is kind of an old one. Uh, the whole thing where Jason Newstead came out and spilled the beans about them asking him to join like some Van Halen thing with Joe Satriani. David Lee Roth and Alex Van Halen. And a lot of people saw that thinking it's going to happen. It's not set in stone. People are jumping the gun thinking this is what's going to happen. You know? And then a lot of people are like, oh, they screwed over Wolfgang. Wolfgang's got his own to get off the ground, you know? So, you know, I understand that. But what I find very interesting about it is that they didn't ask Sammy Hagar. That's glorious. That, that's hilarious. But it makes sense, too, because Sammy Hagar is always bashing him, even after the fact that he's like, oh, I take back everything I said about Eddie in the book. He still had to go out and say, I'm trying to get a hold of Alex Van Halen, but he won't talk to me. I mean, going out in the press saying shit like that, why the fuck would Alex want him to be part of it? You know? And, uh... If it happens, it happens. I don't care, man, if it happens or not. People are excited about it. More power to you. But to me, no Eddie Van Halen, no David Lee Roth with Eddie Van Halen, and Michael Anthony and uh, Alex Van Halen, it's not Van Halen. Even though I liked, I loved a different kind of truth. And I do feel, I know it's uh, not popular because a lot of people don't like reality. Um, Wolfgang Van Halen's a better bass player than Michael Anthony. Period. Can Michael Anthony do Chinatown? I mean, that's Billy Sheehan shit. But that's besides the point. I'm more of a Michael Anthony guy in Van Halen. Even though I loved Wolfgang in there, I love Wolfie. Uh, you know, I like a couple songs off Mammoth. Not a big fan of the album, but there's a couple songs I liked off it. And I, I think he's a good kid. 30-year-old kid, but whatever. So, um, yeah, they didn't ask Sammy. That's fucking glorious. And that's because Sammy's got a big yap, man. Just keeps yapping away. And speaking of Sammy Hagar, and I guess this will be the final story, and uh, where I will say, you know, sometimes the only news that matters will be just one story. This was initially one story, but I'm adding all this now. Um, Sammy Hagar just came out and said his next album is the greatest thing he's ever done. When I read that, I thought, well, that can't be hard to do. Seriously, how, how hard can that be? You make something that's better than what you've done so far. You know? And uh, I think he should follow, and if it is true, it's the best thing he's ever done, he should follow it up with releasing Montrose, the first Montrose album with no vocals. Because I think he's the weak link on the album. I love that album, by the way. But I don't like his singing, and holy shit, man. He writes a song about a motorcycle, right? And what does he call it? 
bad moto scooter. So, you know, more power to his greatest album ever that's coming out whenever the fuck soon or the next thing he's going to release. Um, I think, you know, if he was to stay off the album, not write lyrics, it would be the best album he's ever done. But that's all I got to say about that. So, hey, that's the only news that matters. This is how it's going to be from now on. For those that dig it, how I'm doing it now, cool. I'll keep doing it. For those that don't like it and want me to go back to how it was, cool. I'm going to keep doing this version. Because that way you're going to get the only news that matters. All right? Because I can't do it the other way. At least not for now. So uh, I want to thank you all for watching. And uh, stay frosty, okay? Listen to Black Sabbath. And bang, bang, pizza skull, smack him a gobba. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to you ladies of Spain.